Today we're going to learn about the ultimate Rickroll, or how a hacker could get a reverse show on your computer using an MP4 file. The topic of this video is an extremely creative exploit, which takes advantage of a bug found in many common Linux file managers. The exploit will go something as follows. The hacker will disguise a .desktop file as a .mp4 file, and at first glance, it will appear as a completely normal mp4 file. It will even play a video once it's double clicked. However, once the victim was watching that video, in the background, a backdoor is being created, allowing the hacker to have complete control over the victim's computer. For the uninitiated, a .desktop file is a common Linux file extension which is used to launch and create applications. However, with clever, clever manipulation of the metadata, this dot desktop file can be completely disguised as an MP4 file. This exploit only works with certain distributions of Linux. Today, we're going to be demonstrating it on Linux Mint version 29.2. You can find a full list of vulnerable distributions of Linux in Tokyo Neon's article, which is linked down below in the description. Also, if you run into any problems following this video tutorial, check out his article linked down in the description. In order to follow this tutorial, all you need is computer and access to a computer which is running a vulnerable version of Linux. Let's get started. So to go ahead and get started with this exploit, you're gonna need a video file to actually exploit. So this is my real video file. This is just a completely normal, not harmful in any way MP4 file. And so I downloaded this from YouTube using a Firefox browser extension. You could also use the command line tool YouTube TACDL. The article in the description goes into great detail about how to download videos from YouTube using that tool. And you could also just use a video that you captured yourself. And so I'll just go ahead and show you that this is a normal MP4 file. It's just a clip from a SpongeBob episode. So nothing crazy to see here. And I'll close it. And then, so now we need to actually create the, the faked MP4 file that's based off of this MP4 file. So to go ahead and do that, open your terminal window and make sure it, it'll be a lot easier if you're in the same directory where your video file is. And if I type in ls, I can see that my real underscore video dot MP4 video is here. So now we have to create the fake MP4 file, which is actually a .desktop file, which I was explaining earlier. So you can use any text editor you want. I use nano because I'm kind of a noob and I'm gonna call it fake video dot desktop. And you can call this part whatever you want. Obviously, you're not gonna wanna call it fake video because that's gonna be a big red flag for anybody you send it to. I'll probably call this spongebob.desktop because it's a video of Spongebob that I'm faking, but you do have to make sure it's a dot desktop file. Do not make it a dot mp4 file because then this exploit won't work. So after I do that, it's gonna go ahead and open a text editor for this file. And to go ahead and get the code to paste here so you can actually connect to the netcat listener on the attacker's computer, you can go ahead to the null by article. And if you scroll down, to here, it down. create the payload. If you go down to step five, create the payload, we can go ahead and copy this text into that uh, .desktop file. And so there's a couple things going on here. This is just declaring to, in this case, Linux Mint's file manager, which is Nemo. It's explaining the name of that file. It's explaining what icons you use. So it's gonna, it's gonna tell Nemo to use a, a video thumbnail instead of a generic thumb, uh, thumbnail. And then it's going to tell it once uh, the user click double clicks on this .desktop file, it's going to tell it to execute this code. And so there's a couple things going on here. This first part is going back to this this command right here. It's telling it's telling the victim's computer once it's double clicked to go to the this HTTP and do perform a get to download the video file and to actually play it. So you have to make sure that you go um, and actually change this .xx to something to your actual IP address of the attacking computer. So go ahead and find your IP address. I'm just go ahead and open a new terminal and type in IP config, I have config, I'm not on Windows. And I can see right here. So my IP address is 192.168.1216. So I can go ahead and close that. And I'm gonna change this .xx to 216. And in case you change the name of the real video MP4 file, you'd have to change it here as well. Keep it simple, I'm just keeping this real underscore video dot mp4. And then we're gonna have to go to this command at the end and change this IP address to 162 as well. And this command right here is going back to the netcat listener and it's connecting at port 1234. So once you go ahead and open your netcat listener, if you wanna use a different port besides 1234, you would have to change it here as well. But those are the only two things you have to change. 
And so now we can go ahead and press Control X to save it and save it with fake video desktop. So now we're gonna have to give this fake video desktop file full privileges. So to do that, just use chmod. We're gonna give it execute privileges and fake underscore video dot desktop. That's all you have to do to set up the payload for now. To deploy this, these fake videos to the target, I'm gonna go ahead and zip them because if you just send them directly, then it's not gonna mount properly on Linux Mint and it's gonna recognize as a .desktop file and it's not gonna show the .mp4 name and it's not gonna show the uh, generic video thumbnail. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. And I'm gonna zip both of them. You can actually just send the target, the fake video .desktop uh, file and that'll actually be a little more convincing. But just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna zip both of these together and send them to the target. So I'm gonna compress them and I'm gonna call them funny videos because I'm 22. And I'm gonna go ahead, there's multiple ways you can deploy this attack to the target. You could email the target with the zip file or you could put it on a USB stick, drop it and let um, anybody uh, find that USB stick, plug it into their computer because studies have shown that almost a majority of people will just plug in a USB stick which they find on the ground, which you should never do, especially if you're something like a journalist or have a high profile job. Because there's people who intentionally drop USB sticks with payloads such as this on them to get uh, backdoors. So once you've created the zip file and you've figured out how you're gonna deploy it to the target, you have to open up an HTTP server, which will be hosted in this folder. So when the victim double clicks this fake desktop file, it will go to this HTTP server and grab this real video and uh, display it to the user. So to go ahead and do that, we can close Nautilus and then we can open up an HTTP server if you don't have Python, the instructions for installing Python 3 are also in the article, which are linked in the description. HTTP server, and we're gonna host it on port 80. And I have to include a dot. Oops. Um, oh, make sure you run it as sudo. And these exclamation marks just tell the uh, terminal to um, basically paste in the command I put here before. So what this is saying is sudo, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So that's just taking this and putting it right here in place of the exclamation marks. This is the full command, as you can see. Just type in my password. And now this HTTP server is up and ready to uh, display this video file. And you have to make sure that this HTTP server is in the same folder that your real video.mp4 is in. So now we have to open up our netcat listener, which will create our reverse shell once the victim double clicks on the computer. So I'm gonna go ahead, open up a new terminal. I'll zoom that in for you guys. And we're gonna use netcat and we're gonna make it very verbose. And we're gonna be listening on port 130, or 1234. Remember I said, um, if you don't wanna use port 1234, that's fine. You just have to make sure that you change what port netcat is sending to on that uh, .desktop file, which we configured earlier in this demonstration. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start that and it's listening for any connections that are hopefully gonna be coming from a victim's computer who double clicks on that fake uh, video file. So now here I am on my Linux Mint virtual machine. And as you can see, this is Linux Mint uh, version 19.2. And again, the full list of, um, or a list of operating systems and file managers which are vulnerable to this attack is listed in the article down below. So now that's taken care of. This is my virtual machine. It is running on the same computer, but for all intents and purposes, this is a different computer on the same local network. So as you can see, I already downloaded this funnyvideos.zip file and now I'm pretending that I'm the victim. So I'm gonna just go ahead and extract the zip file. Nothing, nothing's weird about um, zipping video files and sending them because a lot of emails, or there's like a what, four megabyte or 40 megabyte cap on uh, file attachments, especially in Gmail. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract this here. And if we open up this video file, we can see that there is um, our real video and our fake video.mp4. And that's why it's more convincing just to send the uh, fake .desktop file because it does have this generic thumbnail instead of the real thumbnail as this real video has, but I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So if I, I'm gonna go ahead and open the netcat listener over here in the side and open these side by side. So this is my Linux Mint virtual machine. And if I click this real video, it's gonna play, but um, nothing's gonna happen. But now if we only sent the fake video and the user tried to open that, as you can see, almost instantly we're able to grab this reverse shell on Netcat. And if we go ahead to the HTTP server, we can see that we didn't set that up for nothing because it is grabbing and streaming that video to this user. Because this video isn't, or this fake video isn't hosted. And as you can see, where'd it go? 
It even has up here in the tab, realvideo.mp4. So you wanna make sure you keep those file names the same or else they'll know something's fishy. But the second they click it, there's already gonna be a reverse shell created. And if we go back to the Netcat terminal, as you can see, I have full access to the computer. And I can see these funny videos and I can go anywhere I want to the computer, I have a reverse shell. And this is the point where you'd wanna use privilege escalation and make it persistent by using something called like cron tabs or uh, something like that. And we have articles on how to do that on mobile. But this is um, a very creative way to get a reverse shell into a computer. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP Zap, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst prep course. Check out the link in the description below. Well, you might be surprised that such an unorthodox attack using MP4 files to create a reverse shell is actually effective. You do have to remember that it does have a pretty narrow use case and is only effective against the vulnerable distributions which are listed in the article written by Tokyo Neon. However, if you're paranoid and you still want to protect yourself from an attack like this, you can use file managers such as Nautilus or Dolphin, which are proven to be safe from this type of attack. And you can also just make sure that your version of Linux is always up to date. These types of attacks usually get patched out pretty quickly. Again, if you had any problems, you can check out the article, which was written by Tokyo Neon. And if you have any ideas for a future video, hit me up on Twitter at Nick Gottschall. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Cyber Weapons Lab.